um, from the Ministry of Tourism. I wish to apologize first of all for the late start and we hope that you understand and bear with us. Honorable Herod Stanislas, Parliamentary Representative of Foster Jack Soufre, Paris Priest of Foster Jack Soufre, Father Albert Smith, Mr. Alison Mathre, Executive Director of the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, Mr. Clyde Hippolyte, Project Manager of the Basic Needs Trust Fund, Mr. Marius Felix, Chairman of the Board of the Soufre Marine Management Association Incorporated and Board Members and Staff of the SMMA, Ms. Donnelly Vite, Representative of the Ministry of Tourism, Staff of the SSDF, Staff of the Ministry of Tourism, and special recognition of our Junior Minister of Tourism, Ms. Shine Savory, members of the Project Monitoring Committee, members of the Soufre Yacht Service Association, CISA, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning once again. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Ms. Donalyn Vite from the Ministry of Tourism, who will deliver the feature welcome address. On behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, Information Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, it is my deepest pleasure to be here as somebody who has very deep roots and ties in Sufre, um, and some of my colleagues as well. It, is, it gives me very great pleasure to be here. So on behalf of the ministry, the minister, as well as my colleagues and those who have tirelessly, Samantha and especially Beverly, the two of them, to see this day happen um, with SSDF and the other stakeholders, um, I say a very good Sufre welcome to you all. Um, for us at the ministry, it's always our focus to see how we can engender development within the sector. Um, with our the operational environment, it's quite impossible for us to do so on our own. And so we have forged very close ties with um, SLASPA, Marine Police, um, SMMA, SSDF, and some other agencies. Um, we have here in the person of Mr. Alexander, um, Mr. Cohen, John, and um, the representatives from the Marine Police. I just really wanted to single them out, but my memory is failing because they have really been pivotal to what is happening today. A couple of years ago, we had the, the, what we consider to be the last break, yacht breaking in Sufre, and this really sparked for us the need to have focused attention um, on Sufre and the bay in particular because of the yacht insignificance to Sufre as a destination. And all of those agencies that I'd mentioned plus many more came together right here in Sufre and make it, they made it their focus to see what interventions could be in, put in place to really halt the yacht breakings and more so to cause, you know, more of a spark attention on Sufre. As a result of doing so, the SMMA and the police work very tirelessly and today we still have ongoing nightly and daily patrols on the water. So let's just put our hands together for SMMA and the Marine Police and Land Base Police and the Slasper. This is a marked, marked improvement with the trajectory of yacht crimes and breakings, not just in Sufre, but around the Caribbean. And we really want to commend the so-called boat boys, but looking at them as young entrepreneurs on the water, for working towards this objective. Further to the establishment of the patrols on the water, we also had the intervention of looking to see what the various agencies could have done to raise the profile of the yachting sector in Sufre and to focus the development on the young men who were um, getting a livelihood out of plying and for, for hire, offering tours, offering the sale of ice, um, offering dinner packages, and as well as time persons on anchor. We know in terms of the modality, as far as the operations of CISA, that they are now called Sufre Yacht Services Association, it wasn't the best. And so they have been very cooperative and we commend them to the point where today we have a registered community organization with a constitution 
actively involved and they have started training to improve their livelihood and technical skills. So let's applaud them for that. This is a milestone. We don't want a very silent audience. We want audience that already feel the passion that we have to communicate and what the boys, the gentlemen, sorry, have to offer. So we have been able to secure this project under the BNTF Basic Needs Trust Fund funded by the CDB to the tune of $125,000, not including US dollars, sorry, not including the contribution that the other stakeholders like SLASPA, Marine Police, Land-Based Police, and the Ministry ourselves are giving in kind and SMME. So we commend the various agencies to stick with us as we unroll and, and roll out this project and more so, we ask the cooperation of the direct beneficiaries to remain focused, to continue to lift the veil, to continue to, to um, fly the flag of Sufre, and to call positive attention on our yachting sector within the bay. In terms of our way forward for the project, we anticipate after it's come, by the time it's completed, the, the CISA group will have a very integrated um, product to offer within the village as well as to work directly with the SMME going forward. Just on this backdrop of where the project was and where it's going, I, I urge you to continue working with us, to being there for the gentlemen. They look very, very smart, and I think they should also be commended on that this morning. They really need to be commended on that. And we just want to ensure that this position continues beyond the project life. So with that, I say to you, good morning and welcome to the town of Sufre and welcome to the unveiling of the CISA project with BNTF funded by CDB. At this point, um, we invite to the podium Ms. Jackie Alle, project officer for the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, who will provide a, an overview of the project. The maritime training for yachting sector targeted at Sufra Youth, formerly known as the Boat Boys, aim to build and expand the capacity of the Sufra, youth, the Sufra sorry, Yacht Services Association, which is SISA, to generate financial benefits for themselves through education and skills training. This group of young men which we knew as the Boat Boys, you heard uh, Ms. Vite say it a while ago. Now, the Sufra Yachting Services Association was unorganized, unstructured, and perceived as aggressive and threatening. As I said, they were perceived as aggressive and threatening to our visitors. As a result, the Su Sufra re received a lot of bad press on social media, and I think we went through that, we, we have an idea of that, and a lot of bad publicity. So um, persons visiting the community would encourage other persons not to come to Sufra or not to visit our shores. Recognizing this problem, a proposal was submitted to the Basic Needs Trust Fund through the SSDF for the training and formalization of the group. With the collaboration of a diverse group of stakeholders, the beneficiaries of CISA will receive both soft skills and underwater training in areas such as maritime law and technology, basic navigation, um, radio voice procedures, safety anchoring, etc. I can't go through all the areas. The community tourism training is CVQ level one certified and will cover topics such as customer service, personal entrepreneurial strategies and dealing with persons of various um, and diverse cultures, etc. This training, when completed, will assist CISA with the marketing of their services and in extension, the community of Sufre. Um, first aid training will also be facilitated and it's a certified training, I believe, for a period of two years and you'd be, the members of CISA would be expected to, to um, upgrade or renew following the two years. Upon completion or successful completion of the maritime training, beneficiaries will be assessed on what they have learned and will be issued licenses, and that will be done by SLASPA. This project is 95% funded by the Caribbean Development Bank through the Basic Needs Trust Fund ninth program under the education and human resource development sectors, and 5% funded by the government of St. Lucia. 
The project comes at an approximate cost of US $125,000, and Ms. Vite mentioned it earlier, which is e equivalent to 336000 862 East Caribbean dollars, EC dollars. So we're looking at an, an investment of approximately $8,340 per beneficiary. And by beneficiary, I mean the members of CISA. And to us, that is significant. Initially, the project targeted 30 beneficiaries. However, since training started in August, or on August 19th, we surpassed that number and have reached at least 45 persons attending the training. Empowering people and ensuring inclusiveness and equality. That is the theme chosen for the 2019 Sustainable Development Goals to be implemented in the Caribbean. The SDGs has a focus on skill acquisition, which addresses skills training and education through certification. And the Basic Needs Trust Fund through the Caribbean Development Bank is bringing us closer to meeting our 2030 agenda with projects such as this one, which focuses on two goals, well, more than two, but mainly two goals, and that is goal number four and goal number eight, um, which is quality education and decent work and economic growth, respectively. For the, just for the benefit of this launch, I just want to highlight two key areas, critical areas, that I believe um, would aid in the success of this program. Um, commitment, and I speak specifically to the members of CISA. I think we all understand that it cannot be business as usual as a, a, significant, a significant investment has been made towards your own personal upliftment and livelihood enhancement. So it is in your best interest to use the tools given you to not just change the perception of what was, but to create a new impression of CISA as a professional entity working towards the overall sustainability of your livelihoods and that of your family, and in extension, the community of Sufre. The other critical um, area I believe is collaboration. When I speak of collaboration, I speak of persons like myself, the Division of Tourism, etc. Um, we all have a stake in this project and to see it be successful. And for this to happen, the SMMA, the BNTF, the SSDF, the Division of Tourism, the Project Mo Monitoring Committee, which comprise of persons from SLASPA, NSDC, um, Maritime Police, and, and other stakeholders, um, and SMMA. Um, to, for us to, as enforcement agencies and monitoring agencies, to assist CISA in, in working alongside them, alongside them, I'm sorry, and assisting them in, in getting to where they need to go and to become a success. Finally, I cannot speak of sustainable, de sustainable development goals and not point out um, the gender imbalance in our project. And I have a responsibility as a staff and not just a female staff, but a staff of the SSDF to point that out. And I don't say it in a negative way. It is something that CDB is, likes to see um, balance. So we have a group of members of CISA, and as you can see, they're all male. Um, if there are any females, from what I understand, they may be not necessarily in the, they might be in maybe a more administrative position. But as far as I know, and I believe that's the information that we have, um, all the, the water members and the members that work out a male. So um, for me to speak of sustainable development goals, we have to discuss that. So however, not discuss, mention it. Moving forward, I challenge our men of CISA to promote the inclusion of females or women in this business so that they too can have the opportunity to benefit equally as the ultimate goal is for us to achieve gender equality. Um, let me leave you, I'd like to leave you with a very simple quote or just some food for, for thought. It's, um, the, the, it's a well-known, there's a well-known Indian economist. I, I, I pronounce his name as Amatya Sen. Some people may say it differently, that's how I know it. He's an economist and he's also known um, to have produced many books on um, justice and equality and he got a Nobel Prize for producing or for coming up with practical solutions when dealing with the effects of farming in, in, in poor countries. And the quote says, economic growth without investment in human development is unsustainable and unethical. And with that, I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Allen, for that very in-depth overview on the size of project.
At this point, I invite you to help me welcome to the podium Mrs. Helena Rene Emanuel, representative of the Sufre Marine Management Association Incorporated, who will deliver remarks on behalf of the organization. The SMA's organization, which was formed more than 23 years ago, um, with the in A of the helping and resolving conflicts between the fisher folks, the yachts, the dingo chatters, and recreational users. And this gives us the, well, actually, the government gave us the mandate to do this and also to conserve our coral reefs and the marine reserves. This conflict has been going on for years and it's still going on. In fact, we have even more now. Now we have um, jet skis coming into the picture where in the last 20 years, we so for SMA we don't have to deal with jet skis. But this is a new phenomenon and that's one more um, conflict that SMA has to help in resolving. The CISA group, which was formed, spearheaded by the Department of Tourism, um, was a good initiative. I don't have to go into the details because I know it has been said. And I think SMMA, we think SMMA has an integral role in helping the, the young men develop themselves and grow. Because what happens is it does affect SMMA directly. We have helped in instrument in institutionalizing the Boat Boys, SISA, now as they call, and we are going to continue to help with foster a good relationship with them, and hopefully the SMMA and SISO will continue as it benefits everybody, the community of Barons Drive, the, the SISO members themselves, SUFRE, SMMA, and St. Lucia as a whole. We need to actually talk to the young I we need to talk to the young guys and to make them aware of all the efforts and the money that has been spent to develop them and to have them help build the yachting sector. In fact, young men, the sector has been placed in your hands. Because if you do a bad job or a good job, whatever that you do, your actions, your inactions, can actually spell good for us or bad for us. And we know the history of the bad ones. So now we want to change that around and help Sufre, the yachting sector, grow to what we expect it to be. We have the natural beauty here. Everybody wants to come here. So let's get our yachts back to Sufre, and we can only do that through her help. You are the first set of people that the yachts see. You are the ones who welcome them. You are the face of the yachts. Let's get good news going again. We have realized in the past year, it's been very good because the slow season has been a fast season for us this year. And I think it's all because of your efforts into making a positive, um, positive um, impact on what the yacht is seeing. So on behalf of the SMA, the Board of Directors, I would like to tell you that we are going to continue to monitor the members. We are going to help mentoring and helping the organization get where we want it to be. I thank you. One of the things that we aim to do in the project is to um, possibly see how there could be linkages formed with the SISA members and hotels within Sufre. So we're speaking of Hotel Chocolat, Ladera, um, and Chastain, Jade Mountain, Sugar Beach, etc. How do we um, work with the boys to, at some point, provide services to the guests of these hotels? Um, they perform a myriad of services, but let's see how in the future these hotels can form some type of partnership with our SISA members and expand the range of products and services to the hotels and we have all of our high-end hotels in Sufre. So obviously that would be a very good partnership if we can only work together in that type of commitment. So I just wanted to plug that in before we move forward. At this point, um, please help me welcome to the mic Mr. Alison Mathre the Executive Director of the St. Lucia Social Development Fund. I would like to claim also roots to Sufre because my father's family is from Sufre, my mother's family is from Shrozel. So um, 
I'm happy to be here and be shared with those like Jacob. So I'm very happy to be here. I would also like to adopt the protocol that has already been established because it is extensive. However, I would like to say, to say hello to the representative of Super Cosija, as well as the staff from the various agencies and ministries, the Marine Police, um, our project officer, Jackie Misale, Mr. Hippolyte, the uh, um, project manager for the Basic Needs Trust Fund, our engineer, Darren, and um, Brandon, the, the um, M, M <laughs> forget it, monitoring evaluation officer. This is a very, very special occasion, and I want to really, really single out and thank the Caribbean Development Bank for this initiative. The Caribbean Development Bank, through the Basic Needs Trust Fund, has provided assistance to St. Lucians for 40 years now. And I will say this, they've provided enough assistance in a number of sectors, but I still believe that one of the most important forms of assistance that can be provided is through capacity building and training of young people. And so I am especially fond of these training initiatives um, that have been provided by the soft skills sector of the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB. It was mentioned that for the beneficiaries, and let me just say this with regard to beneficiaries, we think of beneficiaries as the recipients of the training, but I think we can all agree that it is an expanded, really an expanded term, because it was mentioned earlier that the first point of contact are the trainees. The very first point of contact are what we used to call the boat boys. And that is significant because there was also mention of the perception of harassment and whatever. And what I will say to you on that is, we can dispel all the perceptions and we can make it concrete. Not only, not only do these young men have a very important role to play in terms of the way they conduct themselves, but certainly in terms of building relationships and encouraging yachts and to come back to St. Lucia. So to that extent, the beneficiaries really are the wider St. Lucia. Because every ambassador, every ambassador St. Lucia in terms of tourism, every ambassador contributes to the, the income for our country by spreading you know, the good word about St. Lucia when they go back to their homelands and what have you. And if they say only positive things about us, more people will come. And then there will be no question about whether there is a perception of you know, harassment and stuff. Because these young individuals will be well trained. They will know how to approach people and how their interpersonal skills and how they relate to them. So that is very, very, very significant. And it is for that reason that I see the beneficiaries as being much more than 52 recipients of training. The other thing is that, that my attraction for the capacity building training is that it empowers young people to be able to have sustainable livelihoods. It keeps them engaged because if, especially young men, if they are not constructively engaged in meaningful activities, they end, a lot of times they end up getting into the things that we do not want them to get into. And so these initiatives enable them to be able to take care of themselves and their families. And they are not dependent on any kind type of governmental assistance and what have you. They are able to take care of themselves. They are young entrepreneurs, which is what they really are. So for them, for the young men here, I hope you understand your, your critical position in putting out a good word for St. Lucia, but also in developing your own, whatever skill that you've learned here, and using it to help you to be able to take care of yourselves and your families as you move, as you move on. So with that in mind, 
I want to say again thanks to the Caribbean Development Bank, um, the Ministry of Tourism, the Marine Police, CISA, and I must say also it's really nice to know that um, you know this organization came together and they've been doing trying to do their thing with regard to tourism and yachting. And so this is very, very important, not just the Soufre. Um, I will also say to you that in a lot of ways you the success of this program will, I hope, redound to even more investment in that sort of initiative because I am yachting, the yachting industry, I'm told in 2016 that about, what, 60 something thousand yachts, 69 or so, came to St. Lucia and that they right now about 49% of GDP. That is very significant. And so there are a lot of opportunities, a number of opportunities for training in that sector. And I think we're just starting to do it and I hope that that can be replicated so that we have trained, trained um, boat boys, if you want to call them. We have trained people that are trained, not just in Soufre, but we can do that in Ancillary and in Canaries. And we can do that in, in Grosely and everywhere, library, everywhere we have yachts going um, that come to St. Lucia on a regular basis so that we can have provide a quality service from St. Lucia. Um, your success will certainly help to ensure that more of these initiatives are undertaken, not just by the um, Caribbean Development Bank, but even by through agencies like the SSDF and the ministry. Um, I thank you. Our final uh, set of remarks, and probably not, I don't want to say the most important, but um, the one that may probably resonate the most with our CISA members is our remarks from Honorable Harold Stanislaus. Parliamentary representative for Sufre for Sejak. It gives me great pleasure to be here today to celebrate with you on the launching of this project, the Sufre Yacht Services Association. Today, I believe, is a momentous occasion in the development of the tourism product in Sufre and in St. Lucia in general. The launching of this association today, ladies and gentlemen, to me, signifies empowerment, it signifies capacity building, it signifies progress, and also opportunities. Opportunities, progress, empowerment for all of the people of Sufre, but specifically for you, the members of CISA, who have undergone the training. And let me take this time to congratulate all the members of CISA for having the courage, the understanding to enroll in this program, this project, and to be here today with us for the launching of CISA. I think it is very well known to all of us the contribution of tourism to the St. Lucia economy. Tourism contributes to approximately 60% or sometimes even more to our annual GDP. And our numbers have been increasing on a yearly basis. We have surpassed 1.2 million arrivals and that number is on the upward trajectory. Yachting plays a critical role with tourism development. And it is for that reason that we as a people, as a society, as a country, have to safeguard the yachting industry. And I'm hoping that with the training that the young men received over the past days, the past weeks, that would have given them some insights on the value of tourism and on the value of the yachting, the yachting sector to the sustainable growth and development of the industry. Sufre, we know, 
plays a critical role in tourism development in St. Lucia. And if I am allowed to blow my trumpet this morning, we can see that the promotion, the marketing of tourism in St. Lucia is not possible without Sufre. If you look at there to your left and my left, let her inspire you. The first thing you see is our patterns. Any magazine, any pamphlet, any television, and anything about St. Lucia, it must be Sufre in the background. And for that, we are proud people. We are proud of being from Salta City and contributing towards the economic development of this country. Last I last when I look at the statistics, I think Miss Charles, we had over 2,000 yacht calls to Sufre, and I am very pleased that over the past two to three years, we have not had any major um, breakings of the yachts coming into this destination. So today, we have an organization called SISA, which is well organized, well structured, it is managed, it is going to be monitored and evaluated. So that the boat boys, who are now SISA members, can conduct their business on the waters in an orderly manner. For too long, we have had complaints, we have had issues of harassment, of um, um, foul language, of um, theft, pollution of the seas, the waters, and a whole lot of negativity. And I'm certain that they have understood the negative impact of this on their livelihoods. And they are going to change their attitudes and their ways of conducting business on the way forward so that this sector, the yachting sector, continues to bring economic benefits to Sufre and for Sucha. Your training will also bring great improvement to the level of service, I believe, that you are going to offer. Service that is going to maintain and keep to the standards required so that the industry, the tourism industry sector, can continue to flourish in this country and in this town. Your approach to the boats. One of the speakers said earlier that you are at the first um, point of contact to the yachts, and that is very true. We see you all as ambassadors of St. Lucia. When you all go out on the water there, you all meet those yachts out there and bring them in. You are at the first point of contact in St. Lucia, and therefore your approach, your mannerism, your discipline plays a critical role in welcoming those visitors to our shores to enable them to stay in Sufre, stay at La Pentibolo, stay at Magritte, stay at Anchaste, Jalousy, so that they can spend the tourist dollar in Sufre, so that it can circulate throughout the length and breadth of this constituency. Yachting on the Sizer plays a critical role to the sustainable livelihoods of our people. And the dollar that you make from the yachts has a trickle-down effect. If we have more yachts coming into Sufre, it means that the SMMA is going to collect a lot more revenue from Anchorage. The SMMA can continue to hire more rangers. The SMMA can, can procure the right set of vessels, equipment, to continue patrolling the waters and maintaining our marine reserve. If you do what is right, you have more yachts coming in, over the over 2,000 yachts, it means that more visitors will be taken to our sites and attractions, more revenue for the Supra Foundation to be able to, to spend into the town onto infrastructural, human and resource development of the people. It means that more persons will be employed as those at those sites and attractions. More taxi drivers are going to benefit from the business that you bring on the shores. The restaurants, the bars, the cafes, the boutiques, the supermarkets, every single person in this constituency is going to be positively impacted by SISA. The lives of the people of Sufra Fosse 
will be changed if you conduct your business in an, order, in an orderly manner. This, of course, I believe will also augur well for the tourism product development of St. Lucia and Sufre. Not every tourist comes by land, and not every tourist wants to stay at the hotels on land. You have tourists who want to go on the water, even if they are not the artists, but they want to go on the water and explore. They want to snorkel, they want to dive, they want to fish, they want to go whale watching, and all of those water-based activities. And I'm saying that to you, members, to give you the insight that you should not only see yourselves as yacht boys going to get the yachts to come in to tour and so on, but give you the insight so that you can start thinking creatively, so that you can expand your yachting business into other sectors of the water-based tourism. Because there are opportunities there for you to grow, develop, and become even more successful as young entrepreneurs budding in the sound. I believe you all need some training on um, some human resource development training, which is also very welcoming in customer relations. That is very critical because you know your approach, the way you, you treat, you deal with the, the visitors can have a lasting impression. That will determine whether they do business with you or not, or whether they come back to this country, or whether they turn their backs on St. Lucia for the rest of their lives. I also believe that you need some training in um, CPR first aid, which is very good. You also need some training in small boat repairs, and um, the, I think the coxswain, the boat master's training. All of these are very, very good um, training that you, you um, did, because those trainings can benefit you in the long run. Because today or tomorrow you decide to forget about being a yacht, a yacht guy on the water, and you want to go on the cruise ship to work, you want to go to the hotel to work at, to work at the dive center or the water sports, these certificates can help you very, very much in getting a job in the long run. So that, I believe, is commendable. You have to be appreciative of it and keep those certificates in a very safe area, laminate it so that you can use it in the future. I also want to let the members know that after today, you should not look at going on the water as a hustle. Just to go and make $200, $300 you come, out, you come back on, on, on land, you spend it, tomorrow let me go and make another 100 200 dollars. You don't make it tomorrow and you find yourself in trouble. This is a business. You have now been trained, you have now been placed in an organization, in an association, where you have now become young businessmen of Sufre. So you have to have the notion that I want to be a successful businessman. When I go out there and I make the money, I have overheads. I have to pay my fuel bill. I have to pay the taxi driver. I have to pay for the admissions. I have to pay the, the crew. I have to pay for the food, for the drinks, whatever it is that I have to pay for, and I have to put money on the side. Because I'm operating a vessel, the engine can break down, the boat needs repairs, I have insurance, I have license to pay at the end of the year, when that time comes, I don't have to go and beg or borrow money or ask somebody for help. Make provisions for that, treat it as a business, and if you're able to do that, your business is going to continue growing without any difficulties, and you may not think of any illegal activities to carry out on the water to affect the yachting sector and the tourism product that we have in Sufre and in St. Lucia. That is one of my advice to you. I am also advising to you that you become the policeman of the waters. The marine police, port police, um, SLMA will not always be there to police the Bay of Sufre. You, the, the members of SISA, have to police the Bay. And if a member is doing something wrong, you need to call up on that person. If you see he's speeding out there, creating wake around the yachts, or there are sea bavers, there are swimmers, snugglers, you need to call on him and say, Daniel, what you're doing there is wrong. That is affecting our business. Johnson, you should know better than that. 
what we're doing there is going to affect our business as members of CISA, and you need to stop it. And if Johnson, Daniel, Amman, anybody continues to do it, you know where to go and bring a report. You have the Marine Police, you have SASPA, you have SMMA to report that Johnson is breaking the laws of the seas. He's affecting our business. And this is your livelihood. This is where you make the money to take care of yourself, your family, your friends, your neighbors. And you cannot allow anybody to come and destroy that. Because if you destroy the yachting sector, the yachting business in Sufre, I'm telling you, it is going to take a long time for it to recover, for it to get yachts coming back to the shores of Sufre. They will go to Marigo, they will go to Rodney Bay, or they may just bypass St. Lucia and head straight north to Macbeth, to Guadeloupe, Pitipic, and those places, or go down to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we do not want that to happen. So I'm begging for your cooperation, for your understanding, and for you to become policemen of the waters, of your business, so that it can be sustainable and we can continue as a people, as a community in Sufre to enjoy the benefits from this sector. Because it helps a lot in the constituency. A lot of our people, a lot of our small businesses rely on the success of tourism in Sufre in order to survive. And you all play a critical role in the success of all those businesses in Sufre and Ponsenja. I also want you to be aware of the marine environment. Avoid the pollution. Avoid the throwing of garbage. If you get garbage from the, from the yachts to, to come and throw on land, do not throw it out in the ocean. That is going to affect the marine environment, the plastics, the cans, the bottles. Bring it on shore and dispose of it in the right place. Do not throw your oil, your engine oil, in the waters. That could affect the fishes, the corals, and so on. Do not throw any, anything you believe that is going to cause harm to the marine environment. Because the yachts, they don't only come, on, come to St. Lucia and Sufre to go to the sites. They swim, they snorkel, they dive, they even go fishing when the yachts are anchored. And if the environment, the marine environment is polluted, then it gives them no reason to stay in Sufre. They just go ahead and move out, go to another location where they can enjoy those other amenities. So it's very important that we protect the marine environment because this is where your livelihood comes from. I want to commend the various government departments, um, SSDF under the BNTF um, program, um, the CDB, for partnering with um, the government of St. Lucia, Ministry of Tourism, TVET, um, SS, SS, SMMA, Marine Police, SASPA, for coming together and initiating, conceptualizing, initiating, and the successful launching of this project today. This complements our tourism product in St. Lucia and Sufre. I believe that Sufre is the only town on the island, the only place in St. Lucia where you now have a Yacht Services Association. And I hope that the success of this Yacht Association in Sufre can be modeled by other places where you have yachts coming in, like Marigo Bay, Rodney Bay, and I believe some of us are now coming into library. So Ministry of Tourism, you all have your work cut out for you all to examine what is happening in the other districts to see how best you all can model the Sufre Yachting Services Association in those other constituencies to bring economic and, economic and social benefits to those places again for the development of St. Lucia. It would be remiss of me not to thank the SMME for the leadership role that they have played with this project. I have no doubt in my mind the SMME is going to do a good job at facilitating the smooth operations of this project. I know the SMMA have done it before. I remember there was a time when the World Taxi Association had issues and they could not even get the schedule done for them to operate at Sugar Beach and, um, and Chastity. And it was the SMMA that had to intervene 
to bring some level of normalcy to the Water Taxi Association and get the schedules done on a weekly basis for the members to operate at those two beaches. And up to this day, if I'm correct, the SMA is still responsible for preparing the schedule for the Water Taxi Association. So I have no doubt that the SMA has the capacity, the ability, the interest of you, the young men of Supra Procedure, to undertake the facilitation and overseeing of this project. And I want to assure the, the, the president of the SMA, the manager who was not very firstly, Mr. Bob, uh, Ms. Rene, officer in charge and the accountants, and the staff of the SMA, that you have my unwavering support in overseeing this project, in ensuring that the young men of Sufre are able to cooperate, abide by the rules and regulations of the association, there is a constitution, and that both voters will be able to conduct their business in a very, very cordial, well-managed, well-organized manner in the Sufre B. The times when marine, had, marine police had to be called on several occasions, I believe that must come to pass. We are grown men. We should be able to know how to conduct ourselves on the waters. We've had the training, and we must put that training into practice because it is for the good of all of us. It is for the good of the country. It is for the good of Sufre. And as a parliamentary representative, you have my support. You, the voters, you, the members of SISA, if you need to see me at any time, if you need my assistance in any way or other, I am there for you. I'm there to give you a listening ear and to do whatever I have to do, whatever it takes to ensure that SISA becomes a success. SISA is viable. SISA is out there and that the Yotis will now start giving Sufre positive reviews and our arrivals of Yotis in Sufre will surpass 2,000 into 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 and we the people of Sufre, especially Barons Drive for many families, the young guys who are involved in the business can enjoy a sustainable living and that their families can progress, develop and be very fruitful productive citizens of this constituency and St. Lucia and together we can build that new St. Lucia and let St. Lucia and especially Sufre inspire us. I thank you very much. Thank you very much Minister Stanislas for your profound words of advice and encouragement to the SISA members. I am positive that they will take these words along with them not just throughout the length of the project, but as they continue working with SISA in improving the image of Sufre as it relates to the Yorton sector. Um, I wish to acknowledge um, three individuals. Well, the minister took part of one of my acknowledgements. So just to piggyback on what he said as it relates to the SMMA's role and involvement in the execution of the project from the conceptualization phase up until this point. On behalf of the ministry, I really would like to acknowledge the contribution of Mr. Michael Baum in the development of SISA. Um, from inception, Mr. Baum has been instrumental in providing the necessary feedback, guidance, recommendation, on behalf of the SMMA to ensure that the project is executed in a proper manner. Um, the young men see the benefits as the first-hand recipients of the, the project, etc. So he's on vacation as we speak, but I just wanted to acknowledge Mr. Bob single-handedly for that. The next acknowledgement, uh, I apologize, Ms. Shema Glasgow, the Social Transformation Officer for SUFRE, who has also been part of the process in having the SISA members institutionalized, registering the business with her organization. So I would like to acknowledge Shema. And from the fisheries department, Ms. Rita Strong, who is representing the chief fisheries officer.